Hi there. Today we're going to talk about the least common denominator. We've already talked about the least common multiple, so let's see if they have anything in common. What does the least common denominator even mean? Well, we know that least means the smallest number in a set. We know that common means two numbers that are the same. And we know that denominators are the bottom number in a fraction. So in the fraction two thirds, three is the denominator. We also know that if we want to know their common multiple, that we can find their least common multiple. So what does that mean? So that means the least common multiple of two denominators is the least common denominator. Let's check it out step by step. Okay, so I have a fraction addition problem. Two thirds plus three fourths. Hmm. Well, I know about with fractions that if I have two different denominators, I can't add or subtract them. My denominators have to be the same. But I can't just change my numbers around in the fraction without doing something to the numerator because then they wouldn't be equivalent and my problem would be wrong. So what am I going to do to find the least common denominator? First, we're going to find the least common multiple of the two denominators. And we know how to do that from our last lesson. So I use my table and the two denominators to find the least common multiple between the two of them. The least common multiple between those two denominators is 12. So now my denominator will be 12 because that's the least common denominator. But what am I going to do to my numerators? Something has to change with them so that we can make equivalent fractions. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my multiplication sentences that gave me the least common multiple. So for three, we have three times four equals 12. And for four, we have four times three equals 12. So keep those multiplication sentences handy because we're going to need them. So in step two, we need to change the numerators to make them equivalent to the starting numerator. And in order to do that, we're going to use the multiplication sentences to help us find the numerator of each fraction. And those two sentences were three times four equals 12 and four times three equals 12. So let's start with the first fraction. The first denominator is three, which means I had to multiply three times four to get my LCD of 12. With fractions, whatever I do to the top, I have to do to the bottom and vice versa. So if I multiply the original denominator of three by four, then I also need to multiply the numerator by four. So I'm gonna set it up like this. Two times three times four over four, and that's gonna equal eight over 12. Because I had my 3 from the denominator, I multiplied that by 4 to get my LCD of 12. So now I need to put a 4 in the top to find my numerator to make sure that those fractions are equivalent. Now my new first fraction in my problem is 8 twelfths, which is equivalent to 2 thirds. But y'all know how it goes. You got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. So let's check and make sure our fractions are actually equivalent. My first fraction was 2 thirds, and my second fraction is 8 twelfths. So I'm going to do this the best way I know how and the best way you know how, the butterfly method. So let's butterfly these fractions. 2 times 12 is 24, and 8 times 3 is also 24. So they are equivalent. Now let's move on to step three. In step three, you're going to lather, rinse, repeat with the second fraction. So we're going to take our second fraction, three-fourths, and we're going to use its multiplication sentence to help us find the numerator of the fraction. So our, the multiplication sentence for, three, for the least common denominator of four was four times three equals 12. Second denominator started at four which means we had to multiply by three to get the LCD of 12. So we're gonna use three and multiply it by the numerator and the denominator to make our new fraction. What, like I said, with fractions, whatever I do to the top, I have to do to the bottom or vice versa. So if I multiplied the original denominator four by the number three, then I also need to multiply the numerator 
3 by the number 3. If I multiply 3 fourths times 3 over 3, it's going to equal 9 twelfths. And those two are equivalent. So once again, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Let's use the butterfly method to see if these fractions are equivalent. So my first fraction, I have 4 times 9, and that's going to equal 36. With my second fraction, I have 3 times 12, and that also equals 36. So once again, my fractions are equivalent. So my original problem, 2 thirds plus 3 fourths, has now become 8 twelfths plus 9 twelfths which you don't know this quite yet, but becomes 17 twelfths. So why do I need to know this? Well, when you add or subtract fractions, the denominator must be the same for both. So with our original problem where we had 2 thirds plus 3 fourths, we couldn't do anything with that because our denominators were different. So to solve the problem, we have to first get the same denominator or a common denominator. And we do that by finding our least common denominator, which we found out was 12. Then we wrote our number sentences, 3 times 4 equals 12, and 4 times 3 equals 12. We took the factor that was multiplied by the original denominator and multiplied it by our, our original numerator. That gave us the new fraction set of 8 twelfths plus 9 twelfths. So we made the denominators the same, and then we changed the numerator to keep the fractions equivalent to each other so that we could get the correct answer. Now, with adding fractions, all you have to do is add the numerators together and put them over the LCD to get the correct answer. That's why we need to know this. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe.